What is going on, everybody? Hope you're all having a good Tuesday. Bobby Fye here with my man, Eric Sheets Haber. We are going to be talking about a monster Tuesday slate. Big tournaments. We got the million dollar first place tournament. The first one we've had this year, I believe, on FanDuel. I'm sorry, on DraftKings. And I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I had a terrible night on DraftKings, so I'm glad it wasn't last night because uh, I did have Dodgers in sort of some form or another, even if it was just one-offs and some and basically all my lineups. I had a lot of a lot of Colorado as well. And then I, I had some of the not quite the right guys from Toronto and some of the other stuff. But I actually did well on, on FanDuel because I, I only played one big lineup and I used Gaussman as my pitcher, which was uh, 8%, which was nice. And I stacked Toronto. But even with my three zeros from the Dodgers, I still uh, – I still was able to hang on. So, so not a good night for me overall, but ready to, ready to hopefully go for a million tonight. How about you? So, so I made like $700 in tennis. I, I, I won the, uh, the LOL GPP chopped it with 20 people for 500, oh, beautiful. Five, 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 $519. So when I lead with those two facts, I can, you could probably derive how I did in baseball. Um, <laughs> uh, I had 30 lineups entered in baseball. I cashed for zero of them. And that included, reduce manually reducing my Dodgers to only 40% from a hundred, which is what I wanted to do. Right. Um, but I made it 40% and that didn't help either. Um, so it was just a, one of those days. Hey, you know what? I, I came on here and I said, listen, Chad cool is good at home. I don't know what to tell you, but uh, no, I did not play Chad cool. Um, nor would I have recommended it, but uh, it is baseball, man. And uh, anything is possible, but you know what, if you didn't, if you didn't, uh, you know, you didn't get any satisfaction playing Dodgers as huge chalk on a nine-game slate. You could play them again if it's on a, a huge chalk on a 15-game slate. Yeah, tonight. they're tempting us even more. They took the wind. The winds were blowing in at nine miles an hour yesterday by the time from left field, and it was 80 degrees, and now the winds are blowing out, and it's yeah. 90 degrees. So, and then, and even, then you get another shot to play that 2K guy at, like, 60% ownership, whoever, yeah. whoever, I forget his name, whatever. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to it. And okay. then, um, you know, you might see – like yesterday we saw, you know, obviously there were some different lineups than we initially anticipated. So just be ready for, for some different lineups on Mondays and Tuesdays. You'll generally see that happen quite a bit. So with that said, sheets, let's get to it, man. Um, we got a huge one, huge one to get through. So yep. uh, again, you know, guys know my strategy on these big slates. You want to try to make them small as you can, as fast as, yep. you, as easily as you can. And this first game outside of the pitching seems like a perfect spot to at least not, not want to attack any bats, obviously. What do you think about Wheeler and Morton? I think they're both viable. I think my edge would obviously uh, Wheeler, like most people, but it is Atlanta. They strike out. There's upside and downside there. Um, I like, is that what you have first, Wheeler? Uh, I have, yeah, Atlanta. Um, yeah, so, I, so I, I, I right now have Wheeler as one of my top pitchers. We'll get to it by the end of the day. For what it's worth, these guys do have the same K prop. And after we saw Morton struggle, we see this a lot with good pitchers. Morton struggled at the beginning of the year and has literally been just absolutely like awesome lately. He's looked great. He's, he's done it in some tough matchups too. Um, especially Sam Fran the other day. So in great hitting conditions, he's still, he's just been great. So I, I like both these guys right now. I have Wheeler ahead of Morton, but I think they're both in play. How about you? Hey, so I don't know if you want to, uh, I forgot whether we're supposed to publicize this or not, but you know, I think, I think we can. So um, it is the 2,500. I asked Bobby if he was going to sell any of the 2,500 on there and, and, and he's going to sell some on stakings. I just went on there and bought some. Um, so if you guys have an account on stakings, um, Check it out, yeah. you should probably get in there. Um, Anyway, I, I was first, by the way. I, I got the first twenty-four oh, hours. Nice, nice. Got nice, the first nice. twenty-four hours and twenty-four cents of nice. the of the whole thing. Beautiful. Um, yeah. So the way this slate is breaking down, I mean, we 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 could talk about this overall. I mean, Rodon's going to show up as like a, a as a clear SP one. So for me, the question is where I'm going with SP twos, and and this game uh, brings up Wheeler, who is certainly uh, one of the options, and I don't think Morton is going to make it for me. Um, I just, cause I have you know, some, some better options above him. So for me, yes, I I'm, I'm, I'm on Wheeler. Now, again, it's not a great matchup, obviously, but you know, he is at home um, instead of in the hundred degree Atlanta weather, maybe. Right. Um, so I do, I do like Wheeler as a possible SP two, and I am not getting to the hitting here at all. Um, as my pivot. So I'm going to attempt to make this small by just saying I want wheel over nothing. Okay. All right. That sounds good to me. Um, we can move on. Uh, Pittsburgh and Washington. And this feels like, a, okay, well, well, sheets, what are we going to do with this cheap thing, this cheap stuff from Pittsburgh? And 
Okay. I, I'm right, not I'll, 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 I'll start. I'll I'm start not going to do it, but there's that weird little, he's 5.3 K and at least has a leash and it's Pittsburgh and could get Babbitt on his side and Morton could end up with enough fancy points. You also have an extreme pitchers umpire projected to be in this game right now. I don't know. I just want to throw that out there. I don't love it. No, so so I'm, I'm going to throw out there. I'm going to re- recap what I said on, on in, in our discord channel, which I encourage everybody to kind of check out yeah. um, if you're not in there already is that overall this slate really resembles yesterday. Do you know what I mean? You have this, have the Dodgers as like, as like a big, big, big piece of chalk that's going to project through the roof. You have the same basic teams as going to be like natural pivots and you're going to get the pirates again. You know what I mean? Showing, showing up as a really, really good value value play. And it, the, today is no different. Um, now, with that said, as you were just kind of like uh, kind of scared to really say it, but but brought it up, hoping I would say it. Um, unfortunately, Patrick Corbett is in play. Um, he, he's 50, he's 5,100. He's 5,300. And the the good part about it is that the, these is that a couple of the guys that have been doing well are lefties um, for yeah. Pittsburgh. Um, the only guy who I was going to hit two home runs is probably going to be Brian Reynolds. Um and, and I would I would recommend playing Brian Reynolds by the way in this yeah. spot. Um, um, I I definitely think that Patrick Corbin is a possible SP two on this slate. Um, uh, he's I don't know if anybody's going to play him. I cert I certainly wouldn't. You know what I mean? Like, right. yeah. And yet that's why I'm going to. You know what I mean? Um, and the thing is, Pittsburgh is going to show up as I'm mentioning as good value. So I think people are going to get to them whether they like it or not. You know, if they're playing lots of Dodgers. So they even that makes Corbin, you know, get a little sneaky leverage on all this on, on what could be some. Uh, now I won't say chalky, no, but, but you might have a double digit on guys. Yeah, yeah. So, so I, I think that Corbin is unfortunately in play. Yep, I, I, I don't think I'm gonna probably end up getting them. Certainly not in the twenty five hundred. I don't think, but I'm gonna, you know, there, there's you have two minimum cost guys in in Chavis and and Castillo, right, and. Castillo on his own is a terrific one-off play anyway, just because the guy's homeward in four of his last six games. That's he's been, he's been, he's been good, man. Like he's got um, power. He's got power. That guy's pretty good. And he's, and then they won't move his price on DraftKings. So he's 2.1 K and he's a shortstop eligible, which there's just never options like that at shortstop. So I I think that Castillo stands out. Uh, And I don't think I would go for the full, I don't think I'm going to go for the full Pittsburgh stack, but I do like, you know, the, the idea of maybe a Reynolds, Chavis, Castillo, or Cabrian Hayes, you could make it, maybe make a four man. I don't think I'm going to do it in my big one as of right now, but I do think that they're definitely viable. You know, you know, I will say that as, as the slate shakes out, mm-hmm. I mean, just starting your lineup with what I got right up here. Like if you play Wheeler Corbin, for example, fade Rodon and play, play Corbin, um, you're, you're, you're already, uh, you're already, uh, in, in a position where you could do whatever else you want and not worry about that ownership, I think. Um, True. True. So I don't know. We'll, we'll see. But I, I think right off the bat, I, uh, even these first two games uh, provide some pretty interesting, uh, interesting decision points. Um, I will also mention that I don't see any uh, weather concerns yet for today's slate. Um, it's just something. Just yeah, I don't, I don't think there is anything. Slate. Okay. Um, That's where we're right, at. You want to move on? Yeah, move on. Why don't you start off the next game? Yeah. So uh, Oakland at New York, um, you, have, you have Montas who, I mean, in a vacuum, it looks cheap, right? Uh, he's he's 8,600 and he's been doing pretty well. Um, Yankees are, are rough though. Like, in spite of the fact that, you know, they did get no hit and they did, um, they, they eventually, they eventually scored runs last night. What happened? Was it late? Cause they were struggling for a while. Yeah, they ended up scoring two. nine runs. It's crazy. Jesus. Um, I, I don't think I'm going to get there uh, to Montas. The, the guy who's going to probably garner ownership is 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 the is the rookie on the other side of this game, right? Um, yeah. You got JP Sears at 6100. Last time he was up, you know, he he just totally took care of business, you know, at, at 5500 um, against Baltimore. What was it? Three hits, no runs, two walks, five strikeouts, whatever. Um, and he's home against Oakland, which is an extremely good, good matchup for him. Right. Um, do I want him if he ends up really chalky? No. Um, but I mean, my first look at this doesn't really have him that chalky for some reason. Um, are people really going to be able to play like Rodon and Ray and play the Dodgers? I I don't think so. You know, I think people are going to have to pay down. I think, I think Sears is going to be pretty chalky here. So, um, I think he'll be, I think he'll be on as well. Yeah, so he does rate to be a pretty good play. 
Um, and he's one of the SP twos I'm kind of looking at. And again, it depends on what else you want to do. It depends on whether you want to spend up for the Dodgers or not. And it's, and it's weird because if you want to spend up for Dodgers, then you kind of have to do something like this. And yet a lot of people are going to do something like this. So you want to kind of pivot off it. So I'm, I'm curious to see if there's anything else you could do. Oh, sure. You can play Corbin, for example. Um, anyway, I'm just kind of talking through all this. To, uh, all this to say that Sears is probably a good point per dollar play. He has a good matchup and, um, you know, in cash, you know, he's probably a probably very good player. Yeah, I'm open to it. Uh, for what it's worth, we do have an extreme hitters umpire in this game as of right now projected. Oh, okay. Um, otherwise, I probably would just say F it and, and play a ton of Montas. <laughs> um, I, I like Montas a lot. He's the, wow, there you I, go. Feel like you're, I, I feel like you're getting a similar, not quite the level of Wheeler, but I don't think it's a huge gap between the two of them. And a 2K price discount just because of the Yankees, who also do have strikeouts in their lineup. It's not like they did this. The Yankees hit, but they also strike out. You know what I mean? And they're patient. They work pitchers. That's what it worries me more. But at the same time, you have a guy who Montas until his last couple starts in general, he's been a little more wild this year. He used to be able to just to just have really good control. Um, he's the same K prop as, as, as both Wheeler and Morton as well. Just thought I'd throw that out there. He'd be a long shot play for me, but the extreme hitters umpire, it being New York, it's warm, right? It looks like it's yeah, warm out there. It is. Um, I'm probably going to just stay away, but I'm open to I'm open to both pitchers. I think Spears right now is I have a little bit higher up on my list, but I don't feel like that's a must play or anything. So we'll see how it shakes out. I've got, you know, I'm, I'm trying to whittle down as we go because I, I do have some some interest in some of these weird plays. All right, what are we doing with Toronto Boston sheets? Probably playing a bunch of Toronto. Um, if you want, listen, and again, I say this every slate, but just uh, you know, assuming people don't don't come to all these things. When you have a big stack like the Dodgers out there, you have to make some decisions, right? If you're going to play the Dodgers, are you going to play them with low-owned pitchers? If you want to not do that, are you going to play kind of like the lower-owned, weaker plays on the Dodgers? Or do you want to fade the Dodgers? And if you fade the Dodgers, these are the very natural teams that you're going to want to play, and one of them is Toronto. Um, you know, Walk has been been surviving. Uh, it's the best way I can describe it. Um, he's got, I guess, I guess he's got righty tricks, but, but, but Toronto, they, 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 they can punish, you know? So, so I think that Toronto's one of the very, very natural pivots here off of the Dodgers. And um, I'm probably going to take a shot at those as well. You know? So uh, I do like that. I didn't quite get to Boston, although I could get talked into it if you want, uh, they'll be probably the lower own with some of these pivots, I guess. Um, but I, I definitely think Toronto is very logical and I'm not going to need picture. Yeah, I think that you can make the same argument for Stripling that you can make for Corbin, except for Stripling actually does get there. <laughs> That's the only problem with Corbin. He never does. He always looks like he's going to and then never gets there. Um, I don't think you need to do it on this slate. I'm just throwing it out there as a weird play. What's wrong with that? I, mean, I didn't even think about that. I mean, 5,100, the, the leash is obviously has some concerns, but it's, you know, if he pitches five clean innings, you're going to get, you know, 20. He's been at 20 fantasy points right now, a couple, a couple two out of the last three games, I believe. Um, it is Boston, but still, you know, play play. I didn't even I didn't think about that. It seems like a good play. I don't know. It's, it's an interesting large field play. I think for sure. Um, no one's going to do it and I'm open, I'm open to it. I just don't think I'm probably going to end up needing to do it on this particular slate. And he doesn't have a whole lot of room for error. I, I'm okay with the idea of Toronto. The problem I run into is that it's not like Waka is going out there getting shelled like ever this year. Like no. he's had one bad outing and I know they have a high run run total in Toronto. I mean, I'm, they're on my list, but I don't know if it feels like a full stack to me, but I think you can make an argument for a mini stack and they cross position a lot with the Dodgers. So like if you played Chapman in a, in a three man or, or, or you ended up using Vlad in first base instead of Freeman, those are ways you could get different enough and maybe make a nice little three man stack. So that's probably the way I would choose to treat Toronto today. And there should be some history. So I'll take a quick look at the walk of EVP. Uh, probably won't be too extensive, but I, there should be some. Um, let's see what we've got here. Anything stands out if any, any sort of large sample size for any of these hitters? Um, well, nothing good. Um, nobody's really done anything, but not, not a whole lot of experience either. I guess Bichette's four for seven with a home run, but, uh, yeah, not, not as much experience as I would have thought. Yeah, I, I, I'm okay with it. I just don't think a full Toronto stack against Waka who hasn't been blown up yet is necessarily the best way to go on a 15 game slate, but I haven't found a whole lot I've liked better so far. So ready to move on if you are. Can you, can you, I mean, you could play like Corbin and Stripling and really ask for trouble. 
Um, yeah, no, I, and like, and in, in a get funky lineup, I think I'll do that. Like, in, in, yeah. you know, in just in one of the l- smaller by and large field, I just don't think I can do it in like the twenty five hundred or something like that. Right. It just feels a little, little bit, a little, too, a little saucy. <laughs> yeah, a little, little, little unnecessary. Um, all right, what are you thinking about this? Uh, this again, another another pretty good pitchers matchup in New York. Um, you have the the most consistent guy who's just always somewhere between sixteen and thirty fantasy points in Framber Valdez. He's always good. Uh, I've seen a lot of people try to stack against him this year. I had no idea why. And <laughs> Carrasco, who I think this is a really bad matchup for, but he just got lit up by this team already. I, I just think this feels like a stay away game for me, Sheets. Yeah, and this this fits the kind of the profile of games I talk about a lot. Games that the pitchers are just good enough to keep me off the hitting, and the hitting is good enough to just keep mm-hmm. me off the pitching. So I think this is, you know, probably a good a good baseball game between two good teams with two good pitchers and two good hitting teams and, and just not really a team, not a game I want to attack in fantasy on a 15 game slate. Yeah. I, I, I would say that uh, since he's been stretched out, uh, what I want to point out one thing for Amber Valdez is a four and a half K prop since he's been stretched out, he's been below four and a half one time. And he's been mostly at six and seven. It's not like he's at like four and five every or five and six. Every time he's, he's had seven strikeouts each of his last two games, tough matchups. I, I love that. I love that bet. So there's a little free bet. And I think Carrasco at three and a half K's is just a little too low. That's I know absurd. That him up. I think both these guys are, that's a really, you're probably going to get some juice on the, on the other side of it. But I think those are really, really, really good bets that are going to come through like 80% of the time. I really believe that. So to follow up on the prize picks uh, discussion from yesterday. So we, we, we just, just, to, just to show how awesome gambling is. Right. So we were talking about Montgomery yesterday and we said, you know what? He's probably going to have a nice, easy, consistent game, but this K prop's ridiculous. It's a five and a half K prop. He hasn't had more than five the whole season. So of course he gets lit up, and then but he gets like six strikeouts, but he gets six strikeouts. <laughs> right. That's what happens. Dude. Every time these guys get hit really hard and they stay in the game, they end up striking out more guys because they have to throw they, they, they yeah. have so many runners on. They have to, you know, escape trouble anyway. It's just yeah. crazy. Yeah. Um, all right. Minnesota, Cleveland. Uh, I think we're going to have another, we just saw this match with this situation. Both these guys were the winning pitchers. I, you know, I finished second in the tournament that day with Plezak and he Plezak was 3% owned on a four game slate. Uh, Smelter, I believe was 2% owned and he was the top, top scoring pitcher on the slate. Neither one of these guys has any strikeout ability whatsoever. Wait, wait, wait hold on, hold on. This is, I think the second game of actually the double header yep. today. Oh, and yeah, I actually I have, that. and I have Plinkington against Winder. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, so I, I guess, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I don't know what to do with that then exactly. Cause I um, first like of all, we don't know who's going to play also. Um, yeah, um, yeah. That's a little bit weird, but this feels like the run total. Why would they re- re- announce a run line? It's only 73 degrees in Cleveland, but just feels like, yeah. Winder and, and Pilkington. I've got that. I see that too. I, I think this is, I mean, both stacks of this game should be like open for business a little bit. It should I mean, be right. Especially Buxton. Like you've, you could play the and he was here, and he was, and the twins scored like a hundred runs yesterday and Buxton had zero fantasy points. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. So wait, let me see real quick. Is Buxton is this this is on yeah, it's on the slate. Yeah, I know yeah. I saw that. That that's that's one of those days that'll drive you crazy. Yeah. Um, but I mean you've got a plenty of bats, especially for Minnesota. I could see this being a, a you could stack either side of this game. I, I'm surprised to see the total only at eight and a half. That seems a little low. So I think Minnesota and Cleveland are both both interesting here, depending on who actually pitches. They, they both have a lot of really bad pitchers to offer us. So I think that we can, we can certainly consider uh, depending on who's in the lineup. Cause you're going to get like a cheap Kyle garlic, probably batting cleanup. You've got, you know, Correa and Sanchez are hot and or shell had a home run last uh, night. How do they usually do it with the, uh, with the double headers today? Do they, do they have the better, the better players play both games? Do they have them against the better pitchers? They it have always, it doesn't, it, it, there's no general okay. rule to this. Okay. Um, it depends on how many games they've played and win and all that stuff. But okay. um, yeah, I mean, if everybody plays, I think this is going to be a game we might do some business with, but I will revisit that at live because I can't speak to it without knowing for sure who's pitching. I agree with that. So that's where I'm at. All right, Cheats, Milwaukee, Tampa Bay, and another spot where I think these guys, I mean, look, it has not been the best Woodruff this year. That's for sure. Uh, maybe facing a team I don't know if he's ever faced before. That could be an interesting time to gamble on him. Let me just make sure. Was he, is he up to his pitch count? Well, that's the thing. Well, my, I, my, my, my bad. I, I forgot that yeah. he hadn't pitched in, in a month. 
I thought I for some reason I thought he had come back he, for two. He, for, he, had, for, he had a 75 pitch minor league start. Yeah, we can't we can't even think about him. OK, I don't think. Can we can we can we think about the uh, uh, Shabazian though? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I, I think that's a really actually interesting play. Uh, Milwaukee with their power and their upside, they do strike out. There's a pitcher they haven't seen before with good strikeout stuff. I feel very, very optimistic in the idea of maybe playing Baz here. Um, you know, a Baz and who did we say Springs earlier was the was the other one? No, um, no, no. The, the uh, Sears, Sears. Sears. Sears, excuse me. Well, Springs is also on, yeah, on Tampa. So I get I get confused all with all the young guys, but Sears, the, the problem you're gonna get with Baz is. If he, I think if he, if he's clean and he's not in trouble in the game, in the, in the, if they have any sort of a lead or something like that, I think there's a chance he could go like six innings plus, and I think he could actually throw 90 pitches. They pulled him in the game against the Yankees when he got in trouble in the fifth, and the last time he was out there, he still struck out seven guys, six guys in four and two thirds. Uh, there's definitely upside for him, so I, I, I'm open to Baz here for sure. How about you? Yeah, I think he's another. Uh kind of a legitimate SP2. Um, he ranks a little below some of the other guys we've talked about and another guy we'll talk about a little bit, but not by much. And I currently have him not very highly owned. So I will... Um, uh, yeah, I have him very low owned. Yeah, he's definitely on my list. Uh, and uh, see, I, I, I don't think I'll have a problem playing him even in a big buy-in. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, 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 I feel comfortable with that. Because uh, you got to feel sort of uncomfortable, right? <laughs> Right. That doesn't mean you have to be completely uncomfortable. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I do like Baz. I think he's in play, and I don't like any of the hidden. For what it's worth, Baz with a 5.5K prop, um, you know, it's only uh, one less than the guys who were spending 10 6 for. Obviously, there's more risk and stuff involved, but really, really good strikeout stuff that he's got. So I, I'm definitely into the idea of potentially using him. All right. What are we going to do with Miami-St. Louis? Uh I think the quick answer for me is mostly going to be nothing, but I'm open to the idea of maybe getting weird with the St. Louis stack. What do you think about that? I don't know. So I, I thought you were going to do something else because every, as every once in a while, you come up um, with some Dakota Hudson exposure. And, and I was going to ask you about that because again, we're looking for, for, you know, for stuff, right. right. And, and when you have like a chalky Sears, like for example, and you, and if you want a cheap SP2, I mean, dude's only 6,900 and he's at home against Miami. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I think you could do worse than, than, than try him. But I think that the, the, you know, the, what you said makes a lot of sense. I mean, St. Louis doesn't, they don't get to face lefties all that often. Um, and uh, although Garrett's shown flashes or whatever, yeah, he's got, he's got some talent for sure. Yeah. I, 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 I think the St. Louis is, is, is a very legitimate pivot off of, uh, off of LA um, and pivot off of Pittsburgh. If you want to look at it that way. Um, but I, de I definitely think St. Louis is in play. But I'm more I'm, I'm I'm interested in this in the Dakota Hudson idea. Do you think about that one at all? Or so uh, here's my issue with Hudson. I've been playing him at even cheaper prices, and yeah, I guess I, um, when you know I tried him at the 5400, I believe I got him one time. He was 5700 another time. Um, I think he was like 4K at one one of his stars, 4500 or something weird. Um, yeah, he was. Uh, he hasn't struck out. He only struck out more than four players in a, in a outing one time this season. Uh, He's sure, been sure. pitching deep into games and you're seeing two and three strikeouts too many times for me. It is okay. Miami uh, lowish run total. I just don't think on this slate, I could, I could do it in, in good conscience. I actually think that I would rather take a shot with Garrett if I was going to pick one of these pitchers, even though I like the St. Louis side. And I do think the St. Louis side, because especially you'll, you'll probably get Carlson up near the top who's affordable. Yep. As is reasonably priced. Um, I can get behind this St. Louis stack The the one through five of the, of the St. Louis stack all look pretty good to me. So uh, we'll see how the lineup shakes out for them because they have tried to play more lefties. You know, they've got Gorman and they've got Donovan now, but uh, who knows, maybe they go, get weird and got Sosa near the top and he's 2K. I could certainly see this being a, a pretty interesting spot. And if you get past Garrett, you know, you've got a, a very average-ish bullpen behind you. It's 83 degrees in St. Louis. I'm sort of talking myself into this one, but I think St. Louis is an interesting stack to get with uh, today. So I, I'm into this idea. Let me ask you this as we move on to this next game. Um, it, it, unless you get some news that the wind is blowing out in Chicago, it is. right? Uh, oh, it is blowing out in Chicago. Shoot. Yeah. I was going to suggest maybe Castillo. Oh, um, I, and I still think that's viable by the way. So just a real quick thing about the background of the, of the wind blowing out in Chicago thing, strikeouts actually go up. Uh, oh, we talked about this. That's right. And, and so if we're going to play a pitcher for, for looking for upside that the Castillo definitely fits the mold of the guy, the kind of guy who could get away with it. 
even if he gives up a couple home runs, I mean, this could be one of those six innings, nine K's type of game for him, maybe even better. Um, it's a lot, he's got a lot of talent, man. Uh, so I, I sort of like him. And, and by the way, uh, maybe it's the right time to finally jump on the Keegan Thompson train. Um, I've been sort of flirting with him a lot of different times. I've thought about him. He keeps making my, my near top build. My, my, he never quite makes my high buy in tournaments, but he's always near there. Um, I don't mind the idea of Keegan Thompson against an offense that I'm really not that afraid of. And then I could also make arguments with the wind that you could, you get too low owned, uh, sides of the ball. So I, I like, I, but I, I don't really want to stack either of these teams, but then again, there's not a whole lot of teams in this 15 game slate other than the Dodgers that I've, that, that, you know, which we haven't even talked about yet, but that we've come across that I think are awesome stacks. So I I'm not that interested in like maybe the full stack, but maybe, maybe I should be sheets. What do you think about that? I mean, we do have 10, 10 miles an hour blowing out. 80 degrees, which Wrigley is pretty, pretty damn good. So I think that um, I think that you can stack either side of this um, uh, if, if the wind's blowing out. And I think Cincinnati is probably where I would start. Um, uh, that's, I mean, that's, 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 that's a way to immediately pivot. I think unless, unless it's blowing out too much in that case, they'll all be owned. <laughs> right. um, but uh, I, I, I don't I, think I'm they will certain, be. I'm, you think so? I didn't know. I, I just don't think that there's going to be that much. Oh, I think like Ian right. Happel might get double digits. I think Ortega, if he bats near the top of the I'm, I'm actually there. thinking of, of, of the Cincinnati side. Oh, the Cincinnati side. I think, I think you just would see like India who will probably get owned a little bit. And I think that Votto will get owned a little bit because of his. Part. Yeah. But I, I assume I'm probably out of play. Um, I would like to talk us actually a little bit. I'm gonna stop. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I can't believe he still plays. Um, <laughs> He's so, actually been hitting the ball better, not home runs, but he's been hitting the ball better. But you get a fly ball hitter like this, and you can, you know, he pops pops the one up to center field, and uh, 380 feet turns into 405 feet, 410 feet. So I could get behind it a little bit. Nice yeah, so I don't, I don't think I'm going to mess with the Castillo if the wind's blowing out, even even though strikeouts are, are you know not not that bad. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but I I think that uh, if I do get news that the wind is really continuing to blow, I I might I might take a shot at Cincinnati. Yeah, and, and for what it's worth, again, Castillo, another guy with five and a half K prop. Uh, Keegan Thompson only at three and a half, which seems kind of silly to be that low. I don't really know why that is. He struck out 16 guys in the last 12 innings he's pitched. <laughs> why would he have a K prop? It's only three and a half. Uh, Cincinnati, well, they're, you know, I know they don't strike out a ton, but they're bad. Off. I, I don't know. I, I think both, I, I'm going to have some K props posted on the site today, guys, and, and, and we'll go through them because I think there's a lot of good spots, and I've been doing pretty, pretty damn well. Uh, getting the K props right so far with the exception of Jordan Montgomery yesterday, <laughs> um, which I went under on, but my overs have been awesome. All right. Texas and KC sheets. What do you got for me? Anything? No. Um, like Texas is going to be like one of those, you know, they're in play every day and, and they, they, they've put up some big numbers lately. They've got some, some guys who you, you don't, you don't mind getting to and easily outside of that one, just incredible performance. Um, where I believe he just gave up one hit. He had like a no hitter going. Uh, he I, he's not good. I, I I don't know why he's been able to get. Well, I would it. also I would also say that that his other games were at Angels, at San Francisco, against Houston. You know, it's not as if he's he's, he's had he's had it easy out there. Um, That's true. But uh, uh, but hey, these Texas guys aren't so bad. I mean, you've got Garcia, Corey Seager, Simeon. This is not the old Texas. Then you've got the, uh, you know, you've got Jonah Heim, who's a decent hitting catcher behind the plate. You've got, uh, you know, Cole Calhoun down near the bottom, Nathan Lowe's back. I, I could see this offense doing some damage here. You've got the cheap Josh Smith, who might be leading off, which might be the automatic value play at 2.4K if he does lead off. So I'm into Texas a little bit here, actually. Yeah, I, I'm just going to say that I, I know what's going to end up happening. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to shuffle some of these Patrick Corbin guys or whatever. I, I think I'm gonna end up with a Heasley or two. Um, Interesting. I just, I just think I'm going to. Um, uh, I don't know. We'll see. Well, you're a better hope, man hope, than me because I can't hopefully, pull that. Hopefully, hopefully I don't. Um, okay, uh, let's let's move on before I just, I really recommend him. Uh, let's go to Dodgers, Colorado. Yeah. Okay. So I'll go. Uh, here's the issue. I'm not worried about with. The, let me just point out what, one of the things that I look at when I look at the Colorado guys who have been, you know, this shit this is a great spot. The hitting conditions are great today. The Dodgers are monsters, but they were terrible and they're terrible yesterday. So all that stuff the, if you, if you get them against guys, these, these weird off speed lefties who actually are better at, you know, pitching to contact and don't necessarily strike a ton of guys out. Max Fried would be the, the best example of these kind of guys. Obviously Kyle Freeland is not in that same category. 
But Kyle Freeland, I mean, they they face they have they have 177 plate appearances against against Freeland uh, with the lineups out there, and they're hitting 220 off of them with five home runs in, in 170. So that's a home run per 30 for, for almost all, about 35 per one per 35 at bats. These are not overwhelmingly great. And remember, half of these times that they've been hitting against him have probably been in Colorado. So we haven't really gotten to these, this guy yet, you know, not to say that it won't happen today, but to do it at mega chalk, right, on a 15-game slate. Now, even if I don't play them, they're, I'm probably getting the pieces of them here and there because on, on, on top of everything else, Freeland, you can run all over him. Like there, there's, there's, there's ways to get there without the stack having to get, get all the way there. The problem is the Dodgers prices – make it tricky. Um, you might get Trace Thompson a little higher up in the order because he's, you know, the left, they, they batted him fifth against, uh, against Freed, I believe. Um, may, I don't know if he'll go that high, but even if he's like sixth or seventh, that at two K flat, if you're going to do the stack, I think the guys who will be left off of it uh, that people will leave off will be Bellinger, Hanser Alberto, who I probably am okay with leaving off too, but I would go Bellinger, Bellinger, Trace, uh, and then you get into the to the real bats, and you know you play the Muncie Freeman and lefty lefty. It's that's other things you got the lefty lefties out there. I, I don't know what they're going to do with their lineup. I actually think you might see something different a little bit today. So my favorite bats would be Trey Turner and Will Smith. Uh, nothing shocking there. Trey Turner is probably a cash game must if you're playing cash today. If the one position like he he's going to have a bad game here and probably still put up ten plus fantasy points. You know what I mean? He just if he gets on base, he's getting a steal. That's probably happening. So I, I, I think the Dodgers are, are going to clearly rate as the best, the best plays on the slate. And as much as, you know, we're going to get creative and say, oh, well, we should be playing, you know, stacking against Kershaw now. You know, the strikeout stuff isn't quite, what, you know, what you'd hope for. But he's also been warm, uh, sort of ramping back up. If Kershaw was like somehow like 8K on this slate, which, by the way, could be possible. I've seen him lower than that on, at Coors. I would take a I would gamble on Kershaw. Um, I'm not going to do that. And I don't really want to stack against Kershaw, but I don't mind if you wanted to take, you know, a CJ Crone, a Connor Joe, Chris Bryant actually is a reasonable one. Um, I'm just going to take a quick look at Kershaw's BBP because this, these are teams obviously who've, you know, faced each other a million times. Um, I, I think that I'm just, I mean, I like the Dodgers. I'm going to do my damnedest to not, to not make them my primary stack. Because I, I mean, I just gave good reasons why to fade a team that's going to be as high owned as they are. However, they do have some guys who are going to be very low owned because of the size of the slate. So I'm just sort of going back and forth on how I'd want to do it. Um, if I was going to take, you know, and Kershaw has been hit a little bit by these guys. Actually, Kershaw's given up seven home runs, 120. Yeah, I mean, uh, Blackman has always been pretty good against him. And Chris Bryant, you know, limited sample, four for 13, two home runs, double. Um I, I think that Chris Bryant would probably be my favorite play if I want to take a bat against Kershaw. What are you doing with this game? First of all, I would add that I don't know if he's in, but like I think uh, Austin Barnes is like twenty six hundred or something like that. If he plays um, today, I, I don't. Th- it, well, so he should he should he, he was Kershaw's catcher, but Will Smith has been good, and they are sort of moving over towards just generally him. But I think you're I think you might see him. And by the way, you could see both of them potentially today. It's probably unlikely, but it's possible. You could see Will Smith as a DH today. So I, I'd like, I would add him to the mix of, of the Dodgers that you brought up, and maybe they do uh, screw around with the lineup a little bit. I'm not, I'm not going to get to Kershaw. Um, and I do have Colorado circled as, as kind of a pivot, as, as I did last night, you know. And, 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 um, and uh, but, you know, if, I've, I, I'd rather play them against Tyler Anderson than Clayton Kershaw. You know, that's, that's like right, a right. you know I mean? so on, on a nine game slate instead of a 15 game slate. So um, I, I think I think that better. Like, I'd rather play the Cardinals. You know what I mean? Yep. I, I think that's totally fair. And not to yeah. mention that there's there, there's a good guy, there's good stuff behind him. I just want to point out though, it's 90 degrees and 15 mile an hour winds to left center in this good case. Great. Good it's, it's it's and that's in that's in cores. That just the ball just should just take off like a rocket. Um, the problem is Freeland, Freeland knows the deal. He knows the story. Yep. You know what I mean? He's, yep. and, and by the way, hasn't given up more than one home run in a game this season. He did allow three steals his last time out. And he just, he just gets through enough by just giving up singles to people. Um, it's a really, it's a tough situation. Cause I, I definitely see the argument. I'm definitely not going to make sure I have to have Dodgers in every lineup. That's not going to happen today or yesterday. I, I still will. I, I would probably have done the same thing again, to be honest with you. Cause I liked my secondary stacks enough, but today I, I wouldn't, I don't think you need to play the Dodgers. I do think that they're, uh, you know, they're, they're the most likely team to probably go nuts. But I, I mean, we, I've seen this story so many times with Freeland and the numbers back it up. 
he's been good against them. He's actually been better against them than Kershaw has been against these Rockies. So on a, on a pretty large sample. So just throwing that out there, that, that's your, that's your reason for the pivot uh, for, for the, for, for the, for the skipping it. But obviously the Dodgers, you know, are a great stack. Like it's just trying to find ways to get off the chalk. So I got to get to the bottom of this because it says that the, the, that they suspended 12 players and coaches from the angels and Mariners game. Um, I, I looked at a bunch of them. Is that where you are? Oh, you're, oh, you're the angels side of it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just looking at the, about this. Yeah. A, a, and the assistant pitching coach, the bench coach, the interpreter <laughs> and, and the catching coach were also suspended. But does that mean is is it like other sports where they actually don't get suspended? You know what I mean? Are they still going to be play, be there? There's, there's, while so it depends on what the teams tend to do, and mostly the, the teams will tend to appeal. I don't know how they're going to appeal much from that particular thing. And usually, until they appeal, you, you would you would you know you'd, you'd be able to play them. Um, I'm sorry, you, you they'll, they'll they'll stay playing. But I don't know what's going to happen. We'll probably find out in the next few hours. My guess is. So yeah, I see. The hard. thing is, I I re um. I I, th- I thought that I saw something on Twitter um, where it said something, but now I forgot what it said. So so it, it's a uh, so suspensions from the brawl. Suspensions have been handed out. Um, I do I do remember seeing something uh, fallout, long list of suspensions. I don't know. I don't, I don't know who they're actually who was actually any chance to play or not. In any case, um, I do have the Angels. The reason I bring it up is you have the Angels as as once again, a very legitimate logical pivot off the Dodgers. Um, mm-hmm. And if in fact uh, these guys, you know, play, um, I want to play them. <laughs> um, uh, as far as the pitching goes, I don't really. Boy, oh boy! It, now I got below above in my freaking head. Like he was, he could, he texted me the other day and he was like. Uh, he was like, "Hey, good job!" And then whatever in, in the in the turn in the, the GPP or whatever. And I said, "Yeah, all I did was I took the freaking White Sox and I you know I moved them from ninety percent to forty percent. I ended up with what I had, you know." Mm-hmm. And he says, "Good job, whatever." He says, "But do me a favor, please never play the White Sox. They're just the worst. They're like dust, right?" So I ha- he's from Chicago, so I actually have to hear I have to hear this all the time. So now now this is in my head while I'm looking for cheap pitchers and I'm looking at this Chase Selfman who hasn't gotten a guy out in a while, um, and I wonder if I want to play him. Uh, I don't think I do, but I'm just kind of thinking about it. So for me, it's going to be angels and probably nothing else. It's also really tough. I mean, just, just, just on, on drafting, maybe Fandle, we can get, we can get involved in some of the Chicago White Sox business, but I don't know on DraftKings how you're supposed to, but like you also have Vaughn and Abreu at the same position. And Andrew Vaughn has been significantly better than Jose Abreu has this year, but the two guys you want to stack batting second and fourth the most probably are the guys who are going to be, uh, I mean, you, they play the same position. So it's, it's kind of tricky to find it out um, to figure it out. I do like sheets as a, as a one-off play. Uh, I always like the power for 2.3. I don't care that it's a 0 for four strikeout game McKinnon on the other side for the angels 2.3 would make things work. I'm not, I'm not desperate to try and stack against Cueto. I, I, as you, I, you know, talk about guys who have tricks. This guy is like the master. Oh, yeah. He's the righty version. And just say so everybody, like what, what he does, he hasn't pitched less than five innings in, in any of his starts this year, which means he hasn't really gotten rocked. He'll give up some home runs here and there. Every now and then he'll, you can steal a base off of them. Um, but he's been pretty good. And the Angels have a lot of question marks with their lineup. We don't even know who's playing. Once you get past Trout and Otani in, in Ward, you've got McKinnon. Um, you do have Walsh, but then it gets to Rangifo and Brandon Marsh and Velasquez. So there are some weak spots in this lineup where, I, I'm not talking about playing Cueto. I'm just sort of thinking about whether or not I want to even consider this. I'm open to the Angels and White Sox both, I would say, but I don't think it's any, either of them are priorities for me. Yeah, so tell me, now we're going to get into two, two sub-narratives here. Um, what was it that you had said with um, Otani and Cueto? Did they both play in like the Japanese league or something like that? And one of them was uh, used to Cueto's unique delivery. There was something about Cueto's delivery or something because he came from like the Japanese league that somebody recognized or something like that. Do you remember any of that? I, I have a vague memory of it. I don't know if I, I can't remember okay. if I said it or what it, what it was, but okay. um, I don't know. I mean, it, the thing is like the guys are good enough in the major leagues to sort of pick up on stuff, but Cueto still is just, just solid enough to where I think that it's, you know, I think that, and he has a high run total against him every time. And he just keeps pitching solid enough. He's probably going to give up a few runs. He might give up a home run, 
Uh, I don't see him as the guy who's just like a gas can out there just getting torched every time. He's giving up some hard contact. That's what he does. He hasn't been, you know, he, he generally has fairly decent control. And it just doesn't feel like a desperate. I don't feel desperate to stack either of these teams, but I'm certainly open to it. I might revisit this one later because I don't you know. Have, I, I, I just wanted to say, I, I wanted to say because the sub narrative is that the Otani is, you know, if he's actually missing his interpreter. I wonder if that's a, if that negatively affects him in some way. Interesting. But, but the, re the reason I, I bring this up, I, I pull up Otani just to show you guys. Look, so if you want to play baseball DFS and you don't want to play basketball, right? Or used to playing basketball, I just, I just pulled him up here. Check this out. Check and this is this is like a legit MVP candidate. You know what I mean? If if not the favorite, whatever. Well, so yeah. You go, I, think, I think what's his name? I think that Aaron Judge is going to be hard to hold your over well, past, but 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 the point is, is that you see at forty six fantasy points, I know. <laughs> right? Wait a minute. He's got zero fantasy points in four straight games. Like after that, right? This is baseball, man. It's this wrong. Is... It's wrong. It's it's not right, though. Oh, because he was pitching. He, oh, okay. he, well, not no, and, and they miscounted the stats. Like you could see, he had two yeah, walks. He's a home run. Point. What the hell? Yeah, so it's a little it's a little oh, misleading. That sucks. It is strange with with Otani though, because he, he, you know, his pitching number. I mean, he's had oh, he's had some of. I think he's had he might have had the highest pitching score, or maybe the second highest pitching score of the year. And he's got like three of the top ten scores on offense. Oh, oh so he gave him 46, 46 he was a pitcher. All right, uh, yeah, never mind. It was unbelievable that day. Never mind. Yeah, but um, it's always, I know it's, it's always tough with him and the game log stuff because they they don't they haven't figured out a way to do it yet, and uh, I'm not sure they're going to necessarily. All right, um, so moving on. Here? Moving on. Yeah. Uh, uh, San Diego, Arizona. You like any of this? I think that both pitchers are definitely in play, especially Manaya. Like I know that he just pitched against the same team. I, I'm not a huge fan in general of back to backs against the same team. Strikeouts were good in that game. A uh, few miss, uh, you know, untimely hits that he had, but he pitched well in the game overall. Didn't get the win. Um, that's, I guess, what you know would have gotten him over twenty some odd. I, I think that there's a, there's upside for him to have a thirty type of outing. And uh, this is not a terrible, as bad of a lineup in Arizona as people think. But the roof is going to be closed. Both pitchers are, are good, and they will be a, a low owned. It, it just feels like if we played this slate like at certain other points of the season after Manaya's big games and stuff. Maybe you would be seeing Manaya as one of the chalky guys. And right now, I just don't think that's going to happen. So both guys with five and a half K props. I think both of these pitchers are, are definitely in play. Um, like I said, we just saw this matchup and, and Gallon put up 26 in that game, get 11 strikeouts against San Diego. So it'd be hard just to write these guys off. I think Manaya and uh, Gallon are both uh, are both firmly in play here. Uh, and I'm, I'm curious how, how the umpire breaks because Manaya can get a little bit wild, even in, in at bats. Like he'll just... It, he, he does walk a lot of guys, but he also gets like the three ball counts, like as much as any pitcher in baseball, that's actually good. And that's obviously if, if you get a, pick, a good, a good pitcher's ump on your side, maybe it could help him out a little bit, but I, I think both these guys are, are very, very reasonable plays for DFS today. No hitting for me. I, I, I totally agree. Um, I actually prefer the other one. I, you like well, Allen better. I think so. But, but, but what bothers me is that, He's coming off 115 pitches and 11 Ks in his last start. Yeah, it's a little, um, a little tough. That's rough for me, uh, yeah. being the person that I am. So, but you know, he's he's lower owned than some of these other guys, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. Or is he? I know. Let me look at this a second. Yeah, he's not going to be owned. Yeah, so I, I would definitely take a shot at that. Um, yeah. You know, you want to pivot off of Rob. Like, I have no problem pivoting off of Robbie Ray, for example. Like if that's, if that's my decision, like if yeah. you tell me Robbie Ray's 25% and Zach Allen is eight, you know what I mean? Like I'll take this all day long. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, I hear you. So I, I like that. I not, um, who do I like more? You know, I like them the same, uh, Manaya and Gallon. I like maybe play them, maybe hope for, like I say, hope for a good umpire, good mojo in the stadium and play them both or something like that. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I just what just for the record, I it would play unless the pitchers are just absolutely awesome strikeout guys and have the highest K props. I yeah. don't on 15 game slates use the same pitchers from the same game. It's yeah, just too big of a slate to get the absolute ceiling. And I'm still trying to find it, even if I whether I get there or not, I'm I'm still always looking for it. Right. Um all right, but but yeah, I think they're both both completely legitimate options, uh, or pivots off of uh, the guy we're about to talk about as the mega chalk, right? Yep. I don't think that there's any question that Carlos Rodon. At, at quick at first glance is the best option on the slate the guy just racks up i mean the best numbers he's facing detroit 
Um, he's got the highest K prop on the slate. I believe at seven and a half. Uh, he has an incredible leash and you just got to hope that, that, uh, that some of these, these, uh, how do you buy as doesn't hit a couple home runs or something, I guess, because he's got great control. The thing about him that that's a little, it's, it's not even disturbing because he doesn't need, he has the leash, but like, he doesn't need, need it very often. You know what I mean? He's, he goes through seven innings and he, he threw 91 pitches, pitched eight full innings against Pittsburgh the time before that, 98 pitches with that's really hard to pitch eight full innings in baseball and not hit over hundred pitches. And he hasn't been over hundred pitches since back in, in, in May, but at the same time, he hasn't needed to, he's just been awesome. So I, I'm very, very, you know, obviously Rodon is, is the clear chalk and I think it's, it's fairly good, but there's a, you know, we mentioned a bunch of good pivots if you want to get different. And, and one of them is going to be the guy on the other side of this game. Uh, he's been really bad his last three outings. But facing a team he's never faced before uh, with elite strikeout upside and anytime he's on the mound, certainly a long shot play for me uh, belongs probably in the gallon Mania category, a little bit lower than those guys for me. But I, I mean, would it strike, would it surprise me if he goes into San Francisco and strikes out 10 guys in seven innings and gives up nothing? I, I no, not at all. So he had, he's definitely making my list. He's just not going to be at the top of it. Yeah. I don't know if I can, if I can uh, accomplish that uh, to get the screwball. But um, oh, I'll say it another way. I, I, maybe I can. I'm playing mu- much worse pitchers than that. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, it's like, so maybe I can. Uh, but I think if I'm going to do that, I'm probably going to prefer the uh, that from that other game, the uh, that Arizona game. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah, I have Rodon as as, as rated the top uh, top pitcher. Um, I have him also rated about about 45 percent owned um in in i would say 45 percent on the lottery i think in the i think in the millie maker it might be 65 percent i think um, i think you're probably i think that's, i think that's a, an accurate percentage you know regardless of whether it's if it was up it's 30 in the lottery i would bet it's 50 percent you know what i mean right right, right right yeah um and you know good matchup at home and everything that you just said and, and relative lack of competition when you think about it you know um all these other guys we mentioned they 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 just, they all have a little ding on them. You know, it's either a matchup or they're not quite as good, you know, whatever it is. So, and, and, you know, I heard someone else make the case for this. I mean, 10-4 is just in this spot. It's just kind of just too cheap. You know what I mean? Like he's supposed to, supposed to be like 12,000, you know, in, in mm-hmm. situations like this. And they, you know, they, they the, the sites don't do the greatest job of, of, of doing that. Like finally the NBA after like years, finally figured that out. You know what I mean? Right. And at least with the, with the elite guys, they made them like 12, six, you know, whatever it was. Um, I don't think they've done that right in, in, in baseball yet. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, yeah, Rodon and, you know, I, I'm not getting any of the hitting in this game. Um, and that's about it. Yep. Um, all right. Let's jump over to the last one. And I just want to point this out. I don't know if any of these early projections are going to be as high on Robbie Ray. And I don't understand the total fantasy point average here and all this stuff. Um, this Baltimore team has just destroyed him. Like every time he pitches against Baltimore, I feel like they end up getting to him. And I looked at the numbers just now to back it up there. They hit 316 as a team against him and just less than hundred plate appearances, which is pretty good for modern day baseball as a sample size. And however, he does have a 30, a 36% K rate. Um, so but I certainly get the argument, but it feels like a, it feels like a, like a large field GPP type of play. And I feel like it's being treated like it's got to be the mega chalk. And I don't really know why I think I would rather just spend up for Wheeler and Rodon and figure something out with some of those value bats than I would dropping down just to, you know, it's not, it's not as much of a discount. Like if he was 8,500 here, I could understand why he could be 30% owned. I don't think he's going to end up necessarily being 30% owned, but if he is, that feels like too high of ownership to me. Um, and Baltimore's pesky, you know what I mean? They've got some Ooh, guys they stuck, like, they oh. stuck it to the, they stuck it to the chalk last night in fine style. Yeah. Shout out to my man Shrek for winning the big one last night, hundred K and he did it by the, with the Baltimore stack. There it is. He did it with the, the ultimate contrarian play, you know, stack yep. against the, the most popular pitcher. Yep. Um, but yeah, they, they've hit him well. And, uh, it, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's not overwhelmingly exciting to try to, uh, to try to play him for me here tonight. However, there's always a, you always feel nervous because, you never, you might get that 12 strikeout Robbie Ray game in seven innings and he's the best pitcher on the slate, but I feel a little bit like he's getting a little too much credit from the ownership. So I'm going to have to, to put him even behind Manaya on my list as of right now, um, just because the ownership factor, I don't see him as being that much better of a play today than Manaya as it is. And I also think, you know, he does have a six and a half K prop. You have a slight hitters umpire in this game. 
so he's definitely, he makes the list. Don't, no question about it, but I don't think I'm going to be able to actually do it. The other guy, you know, Dean Kremer has actually been pretty solid so far. Uh, but if you wanted to, 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 to bet on, you know, coming back to the average and all that stuff, you know, it's the same argument we made yesterday. Seattle, I think, is an interesting stack. Uh, they've got some cheap options that let you do it pretty interestingly. But I'm probably – and you get a bad bullpen behind Kremer. But I, I probably am uh, going to stay away from the hitting in this game and just uh, probably be lower on Ray than the field. And he probably won't be I – don't, I don't think he's going to make my 2,500 buy-in. It doesn't feel necessary to do that to me. Well, because if you do that, I mean, what are you going to do? I mean, you know. If he was, like, 5% owned, I'd be talking about how Robbie Ray is, like, my favorite play on the slate. You know what I mean? But right. – He's going to be 30% on no interest. Like, I just don't need to do that. I mean, so what are you, you going to play Rodon? With Wheeler. With Wheeler. And just make that work. I'm going to have to try and find a way to make it work. And there are enough, but she's chief bats in, in every lineup here that you can make it work. I, so I've got my, my pitcher, my pitching favorites as Rodon and Wheeler with Spears and Baz being like the, the other two I could see, you know, really getting somewhere. And naturally people like to try and play one of Wheeler or Rodon with one of those guys. My, my strategy would be more play Wheeler and Rodon together, play Spears and Baz together and get a different sort of build. Um, those are my favorite four. I think Manaya is, 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 has moved himself up a little bit, and I'm still considering Morton, Montas, Robbie Ray, and Castillo as potential options. But I, th- I don't know how we're going to do this. The 3,600, huh? Who? I'm, playing, I'm putting Wheeler and Rodon in the lineup here. Oh, you could do it because the, you got the 2K bats all over the place. You play like, who's the Dodger Castillo? guy again? And you get you get you get a mini stack with Pittsburgh, Castillo, Chavis, and whoever else you want to pick from the, the cheapos. Right. And then all of a sudden that that turns into the, to almost 5k per batter. Yeah. So just, that's that's the way you that's the way it'll go, it'll come out if you do it. Let me just see what that looks like. Um, so who Chavis, is the uh Chavis at first? So if you put Chavis at at first, Castillo and, at short, and then you put Castillo at short. Or a second. Yeah, um, I would usually go short because that's the hardest. Yeah, player. so now you're a 4K player. Yeah, and then if you added one more Pittsburgh, it could be the anybody. Well, um, not, only, not only that, but I mean, you know, you, you, if, you, if you knew that you were going to start off with, um, with uh, what's, the, what's the guy? Uh, Tristan Thompson. I mean, not, I mean, now you're. Thompson, yep. Tristan Thompson. Uh, now, 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 I mean, yeah, you could, you could, def- you could definitely do it. Like with yep. Wheel and Rodon. I mean, like yep. easily. Absolutely. And uh, that's probably something I will look into. <laughs> um, all right, Cheats, any other thoughts before we get out of here? Uh, I, will, I, will try, I will make myself available to be live. I'm trying to figure it out because I actually am, I'm going to be on the move today, but I, it's a big day, so I want to get all my, my stuff out to you guys and, and all that. But I, I will have something for you live uh, no matter what. Yeah, I guess I'm going to have to play this thing, right? There, yes, yeah, so you, can, you can do all that. Then, then, then you do kind of want to get the Dodgers stack going, though. No, I mean I have to not this thing. I have to play that twenty five hundred, don't I? I mean I can't I can't win fifty. You absolutely have right. to play the twenty. I have to play it, right? I owe, I owe it. I owe it to, to the community to play that. Right? Absolutely. And right, you, fair, fair enough. Fair when enough. you win it, give me a little thank you shout out. Yeah, very good. Fair, <laughs> enough, fair, fair enough. Um. Anyway, guys, well, good luck to everybody. I know I know this took a while. It's a big slate. Uh. Well, I hope everybody crushes it. I'll be in Discord and 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 with you guys later. And uh, you yeah, look out for my plays and my bets and my early builds. And uh, let's make some money today. That sounds good. All right. Good luck, everybody.